Hi Scorpios and welcome to your May 2021 general tarot forecast. This is Sky here to talk to you about the energies coming in for your month ahead of May. Um, I think it's going to be a beautiful month for you all. Uh, much more light, okay? The energy feels lighter. It feels that your shoulders are not feeling so weighed down. It feels like you are um, having a larger sense of freedom and autonomy this month coming in, though with that, I think that you are uh, tested in some of the choices you've made and tested in um, that which you commit to. So commitments are coming up in the month of May, and also the amount of things you've taken on or the uh, total uh, result of what all of that has come to represent in your life. So diving right into it, Scorpio, um, I just really love what I'm feeling for you in May. Um, for those of you who are new, this is just a general reading for Sun, Moon, Rising Scorpio people. I start with intuitive messages, then I do a week-to-week -week layout for the tarot cards, and then I do an extended reading on Patreon, which will be linked below. So intuitively, Scorpio, this is a very Plutonian month in a way. At the end of April, we had the full moon in your sign. Uh, we had a Pluto retrograde that started as well on April 28th. So you are um, seeing your energy all around you, okay? That Scorpionic Plutonian energy is going to be everywhere to a degree. And I think that this particular Pluto retrograde, uh, if you haven't seen the Pluto retrograde video yet, I think that it's a much more light-toned Scorpio energy. I think it's a much more transcending and rebirthing energy than it is like a death or shadowy energy. And with that in mind, I think that Scorpio has to follow in suit. So it's a need for Scorpio to minimize a little bit, to make anything big or... Um, sort of anything that is really stretched out or really overwhelming, overbearing, too intense, too pressurized, too opaque, um, needs to be lightened up a little bit this month, I think. Um, also, your whim, your impulse, your sudden desire to do something with Page of Wands coming up, uh, Five of Wands... Uh, page of Cups reversed, Four of Pentacles. There's something about you maybe struggling to follow impulse or doubting some of the things that you are maybe on impulse wanting right now. So May of 2021 is a lot about understanding the source of your impulse, understanding why you're wanting what you want. Is there a want to drastically change your life or a want to uh, totally re- implement some type of version of yourself to make alterations or adjustments to your identity or your career. Um, anything like that is going to need to be, um, I think, acted on in the month of May or understood the source of at least because you're feeling a little bit too active to me. There's something about your energy that feels to have either not necessarily taken on too much, but your analytical mind or your tendency toward investigation seems to be so invested in so many different places. I'm looking at that Seven of Pentacles um, and sort of combining that with the energy of Seven of Swords, Four of Pentacles. It's like you're really holding on to a lot. There's a lot of minutia. There's a lot of flotsam and jetsam in your energy right now. And I do think that things need, need cleaned up almost with like a surgical type of precision. Okay, there's something unprecise about what you're coming from in the last few months. I don't think that that's getting to new levels this month, but I think that it's seen this month. And within that is a new level of precision opening up to you that seems very much based in your creative capacity with Page of Wands coming up, and also in the clarity, sobriety, and health of your mind. Your only major arcana card this month is Temperance. And to me, that takes the pressure off. That means that the month of May is almost outside of the rest of the year, or there's something about your energy that can really just step out or just disconnect or totally get outside of it to see it. So taking a more objective view of your life, taking a more third person objective view of what you're going through and seeing, you know, if I were on the outside looking in, how and I knew all the details that I know in my own mind, 
as an outsider? How would I feel about it? Does it feel fitting? Does it feel like what I'm taking on or how I'm expressing or how I'm projecting? Does this feel like something that can be maintained, one, and also something that gets me where I know that my purpose needs to get me to, okay? Um, so purpose and maintenance coming up to really need to combine and not be separate. So what do I mean by that? Um, it seems that Scorpio really, maybe more than any other sign this year, desires security and guarantee, okay? Taurus as well, the Scorpio-Taurus axis is really seeking stability this year. And this month, you're going to kind of see what that actually means and maybe rethink it. Maybe um, understand that it's a juggling act in a way to maintain the security in the way that you want. Which ju and, and that, that, that really is. I kind of see Scorpio juggling this month. Like you're, you're like a archetypal juggler. There's a lot and it takes a lot of coordination and precision and it's kind of energetically expensive like what you're juggling here. So I would think about that. I would think about, you know, maybe juggling these different businesses, careers, relationships, and desires. It's like the, it's really like the juggling of what your current reality consists of and that which you want and have, and trying to keep up both of those things. Like, okay, I have this very stable, very repetitive job and it keeps me, you know, um, materially secure, but then I have this great passion that I'm ready to take on and I'm thinking about that. I'm envisioning that I'm looking forward to the future. And it's like you're juggling both of those at the same time, which does deplete you. Okay. That is depleting you. But I think that it's really also painting your horizon in a pretty incredible way. So it's not necessarily wrong. It's not necessarily an incorrect thing to do. I think that Scorpios just need to know that it really is an energetically expensive thing. And that with that, if you want to maintain that, I think that you've got to maybe take on less or you've got to make sure that your health and your vitality is good. Because I kind of feel like a lot of Scorpios actually are going to use this in a very positive way. Like as long as it doesn't, you know, last for years, like this combination, I think that this year it's fine. Like for, for the rest of 2021, you can actually kind of have the secure maintained story while juggling a new desire at the same time and, and conceptualizing it and considering it and keeping it non-physical. But you don't want it to last much longer than that. Even by your season this year, you want to feel that you are manifesting um, everything that you're desiring and not depriving yourself of it because otherwise it's like a coping mechanism. You know, all of these dreams, all of these things that you want, all of these things that you know are right for you, but you're not giving yourself now or you're not starting to pursue or not starting to create that that's at a certain point in time is not kind. All right. Because it's like, it, it, it's, it, uh, it hurts when you have a life that is good, but you're not satisfied with that. So you have all these other things that you want, but you won't give them to yourself. That's a, a, a difficult place to be. And as a Scorpio, I would definitely maybe set a deadline. And I'm talking like the furthest you want to go with it is really like February of 2022. That's our next phase of all planets direct motion. And I'm thinking um, for Scorpio, this previous phase of all planets direct uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, I've made a video on it. It'll be linked below and in the top right hand corner. Uh, the previous uh, series of All Planet Direct from like February to April of 2021 was less material progress than I expected. It was more of like a mindset progress. It was more of a clarity progress. It was more of a uh, internal progress than it was an external progress for most people. It's not the same for everyone. But with that in mind, I think the next phase of All Planets Direct will really have to be more material and more real, and that's February of 2022. So we, we really, as Scorpio people, if we don't feel that we're really embodying where we want to be, or if we're having to cope by dreaming or by getting cerebral, okay, there needs to be a deadline for it, because you don't want to go all of your life in that phase, okay? And if you're a Scorpio who's not having that at all, like if you're a Scorpio who is really embodied, grounded, and physically behind your current present moment, that's the best, okay? That's the best place you can be as a Scorpio right now, is to not be future or past tripping, to not actually be too goal-oriented, okay? And to really be connected to the actual output that you're in right now, to the actual physical expression of you in the present moment. Like that's 100%, but not everybody can actually 
be there right now. Like not everybody is strong enough because it takes strength to trust your present moment, okay? If you're not trusting your present moment as a Scorpio, you really need to put a deadline to it, I think. And you wouldn't really want that to stretch past like February 2022. I think that's a really good timeline for a lot of Scorpios right now. That is what like June, July, August, September. That's like, yeah, eight or nine months, um, which is an interesting time frame. Uh, so there's a conceptualization right now and you might sort of go into a gestalt phase over these next eight or nine months. And you want to um, really pass what you are on right now if you're not satisfied with it by then. So yeah, for some Scorpios, it kind of seems like you have to operate with a timeline in mind, um, perhaps like saving more or being more fiscally responsible so that you can have more freedom around that time if you're not, you know, satisfied right now or if you're not really behind your current output. Uh, there, there is definitely a really strong need to uh, deadline that and be prepared for a transition. This month is kind of a bridge in a way, but I also feel like some Scorpios won't give it to themselves and they want to be more prepared <laughs> to like cross a bridge or to have that transition. Um, so if you are delaying it, you don't want that delay to be indefinite. You don't want to just be in this like never ending phase of like, well... I'm like not hating where I'm at, but I'm not loving it. And I know that I want to change it a little bit, but I don't know when. That's sort of lukewarm gray zone is a very tough place for Scorpios to be. Again, you're kind of an extreme sign. Like, you know, you want the really hot and cold experiences. Um, so whenever you get to a point where you're just kind of like undefined. I think it's difficult for Scorpio. So you want to really um, know wh how long you're going to let yourself uh, stay in that place. Okay, um, let's talk about the positive side of this though. Uh, with Temperance being the only major Arcana card, I think that the neutrality of May of 2021 might just be one of the biggest healing gifts you could ask for as a Scorpio right now. I really think that it's uh, calm, tranquil, and... Um, safe, like where you're at. So that's beautiful to see. And I think that it's really not that activated either. So while it might be difficult to like forecast your destiny, I guess I feel like Scorpios want a forecast of their destiny or something. And it's like, that's up to you, you know, but you might not just be able to connect into it very easily. It might take healing your body a little bit more before you're even satisfied with what you see for yourself. And with this neutrality, or even to a degree of indecisiveness, comes a sort of neutral plane that really actually allows you to balance your body, to balance your hormones or your chemical structure, uh, your skin, your um, energy can all be very, very leveled out this month. So with that, I really can't see any type of trauma or any type of worst case scenario at all in May of 2021. So let's have a round of applause for that, Scorpio. Like, how long have we kind of been wanting that, you know, that just easygoing, you know, I can do what I want. I have freedom in my life. And yes, I also have commitments that ensure that. But in a way, there's a consistency about that that's also very stable, okay? Um, try to not get really caught up in the thought like, oh my gosh, I wish I didn't have this job. I wish I didn't have this, you know, repetitive task that I always have to do because I hate to break it to you, but if you didn't have it, things would start to feel pretty bad about the third day. Okay. About the third or fourth day. Um, there would be about 48 hours of relief, but a Scorpio always needs some type of something to like, um, occupy itself with. Otherwise the energy gets really like, like a typhoon, like a whirlpool, like, you know, it, it's, um, Scorpio needs to be in motion. It needs to be, it needs to have something to do. It needs to, um, output energy in a repetitive way. It's good. It's a fixed sign. Otherwise it can kind of implode on itself if it has nothing to do. But some, but there are a lot of Scorpios that are like, gosh, I just wish I had less to do. I wish I wasn't so busy. I would look more to the health of the body. I would look more to the diet. I would look more to the balance within the body than I would to the energetic output. 
Of course, if you're overworking, if you're um, doing more than you have energy for, if you're working like 50, 60 hour weeks, that's too much. It's too much, okay? Um, Unquestionably. But it's not all or nothing either. It's not a 70 hour work week or a zero hour work week. You've got to really balance yourself out in all ways, I think, to uh, find, find happiness this month. So... Um, but anyway, Scorpios, um, let's get into the week to week and we'll see what else is coming up. First week of May, you have the five of wands rooted down by temperance. And I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit as I was uh, saying that. So the first week of May, it's hard to communicate something. There might be something that you're not telling people. There might be something that you need to, um, speak up on. Um, but it is also the best, best energy I'm seeing there to, sweat to exercise to even do like competitive sports so marathons or running or anything that gets your um, system moving <clears throat> is going to be a really great way to in a way like speak your truth um, maybe there's people that you meet in sport like places where you can really be who you are you can really be authentically yourself um, also not losing control of your speech or not losing control of the throat chakra is important. Temperance, okay? Not succumbing to anger, also not succumbing to silencing yourself. Neither one. It's the same type of energy of as like not getting stuck between like the 70 hour work week or the zero hour work week, you know, to not silence yourself and to also not succumb to anger. Uh, to really be that precise communicator, to really be that precise worker, to really be that precise um, teacher you know, precision, Scorpio. Precision is your key word for this entire year, but it's really coming to a pinnacle of realization in May. Precision, all right? First week of May is going to teach you a lot about precision, balance, and it's going to give you a little bit of realization about the future and about maybe this deadline that we're talking about or this timeline or this um, oncoming change, What's on the other side of the bridge, you know? It seems like Scorpio kind of been on a bridge for like five years, you know? And you might have thought like many years ago that you're like, okay, I know that this is the time that I'm on the bridge. It's going to be very temporary, but it's like the bridge is still going. It's like the longest bridge in the world. What's at the end of this bridge, Scorpio? Week two, you've got six of pentacles rooted down by seven of swords. Um, any unhealthy commitments will be visible second week in May. Uh, any people who are taking advantage of you or any people who are relying on you in a way that you cannot physically do would really become clear. And that that's always happening. You know, we see this so much in these readings, like when you get like a really positive balancing after that's a test, you know, will you use this balance to let it become physical in your life or will you make yourself remain in a state of balance while your surrounding environment is still in that state of discord? Uh, so second week does require a plan or it requires a seeing of dynamics. Both of those cards, six of pentacles and seven of swords are about dynamics. They're about even like a contracts or unspoken contracts. Are you getting reimbursed for what you're putting out? Are people taking more and receiving more than you are? Like there's something about reciprocity in the second week of May is the energy output reciprocal? Are you being taken advantage of? Also, are you maybe um, relying too much on others? It can go both ways, you know, and you want to balance it out. Temperance is your most um, seen energy this month. So week three, you have four of pentacles rooted down by page of cups reversed. Easy stuff. I mean, this is all very like light, like second week, third week, and even fourth week of May. It's like nothing huge. It's nothing that crazy, but it's kind of just like subtle dynamics and, you know, you're just kind of seeing it, but like you might be, um, to contradict myself from earlier, you might be too frugal right now. You might be oversaving. You might be, um, holding on to too much as well. So there might actually be a need to break a cycle of hyper frugality like to the point where frugality becomes greed there is a point where frugality becomes greed actually um so we want to be careful about how hard we go on that but also um it could be more emotional 
as that is rooted down by Page of Cups reversed. So are you holding grudges still? Are ancient stories still having an impact on your present moment, on your present experience? Are wounds from the past still a core cog in your operational um you know, present. It's really important to see that then and let go of it if you can. We're going into Gemini season in the third week of May, and it's one of the best Gemini seasons astrologically that I've seen. It's one of the most healthy collective forms of Gemini energy. And uh, Gemini energy can be a little bit difficult for Scorpio as it is a quincunx to you, but I think that you can benefit greatly. I think that you can become a better communicator. I think that you can finally communicate what you've needed to to the people around you, even if it's been difficult. I think that um, you don't just want to be that silent hero either. You don't just want to be that unseen silent person. You want to really start speaking about where you stand and you want to start communicating um, your feelings as well. Page of Cups is like a emotional repression when it's in the reverse. So open it up a little bit. How are you really feeling? Definitely don't hide it from yourself at least. And um, you'd be surprised at the way that you're feeling about things might be very accurate to whether or not they need to be as prevalent a part of your life as they are. So uh, week four, you've got page of wands rooted down by seven of pentacles. Um, creative viewpoints, okay? Seeing things from very different viewpoints. Uh, different dimensions, seeing things from the 2D, the 3D, 4D, 5D, you know, you're, you you can now have a very zoomed out microcosmic, I'm sorry, macrocosmic view of what you're doing. And with that is frustration, I understand, like I've, um, you know, been very zoomed out with, with my own life lately too. And you can get like really, like, how do you comprehend it all, you know? If you're looking up at the sky at nighttime and you can see all the stars, it's like, can I really comprehend what I'm looking at? Maybe not. <laughs> maybe I maybe I can appreciate the beauty of that vista, but it also at the same time, it's really hard to like know each star and to have an idea of like the coordinates of each star. Like that's that's very micro, you know. So the, there is a need for you to just appreciate the vista of what your life is encompassing now, and there's a need to maybe art artist it to make it artistic <laughs> I've made up a word um, it's it's important for you to get creative about these bigger vistas about these bigger um, perplexities in a way and you know if there's too much taken on if you're seeing like whoa whoa this this business or this outlet or this um, this that I've embarked on has way too many components for one person to handle. That could be seen too, but in a way it empowers you. With Page of Wands, it's like you're kind of excited. You're like, well, gosh, I could really, you know, switch these pieces around or I could really um, make this whatever I want it to be. Your creative control is at a very high level right now, so it's not something to get discouraged about. And I also think it's something that you have to appreciate yourself over too. Like, wow, I've really allowed myself to see all of this. I've really allowed myself to identify a problem, to identify a blessing. You know, I'm not an oblivious person is a very great thing for Scorpio to um, bless themselves with. Like realizing that you're not just out of it, that you're not just unaware or oblivious to your what is making up your life right now. Even if you're not satisfied with it, even if it's not great, it's better to realize it than it is to be like just unaware I think it is at least, you know, there is an argument that ignorance is bliss and maybe it is if you have an easier time on yourself, but I really feel for Scorpio, um, it's, it's a, it's a great blessing to give yourself the knowledge of what you're really involved with right now. And it's a great blessing to communicate to yourself of whether or not you want to move on with that and more micro. Okay. More at a surface level for this month. You know, get out of town, do something fun, um, get into new territory, access your freedom, access your lightness this month, and that will give you way more than than anything else. So anyway, Scorpios, I'm going to do an extended for you on Patreon. We'll get a central theme, supporting themes, and overarching cards, and we'll look more into uh, ways that you can um, come to a more to come to more of one mind uh, through May 
<clears throat> so um, if you want to check that out, that will be linked in the center of the screen and linked below. And uh, your likes, comments, and subscribes here on YouTube are very helpful. If you hit the like button, it helps the video to get out there, so I really appreciate that. And comment below and let me know how you're feeling. Um, happy May, Scorpios. It's a great, great month for you. Very much lighter, very much easier, very much not something that has to be a hard story. Okay, talk to you all soon. Much love. Bye.